Albert Allen Bartlett, here's the challenge. Albert Allen Bartlett once said that the, the greatest shortcoming of the human race is our inability to understand the exponential function. The challenge for us is that we as humans are not used to exponential trends because the observable universe, the world around us, is largely linear. It's how we are thinking. Here's a very interesting, simple example for you where you get this really wrong. Um, so you take this dashingly uh, good-looking young guy. Um, by the way, never ever have your parents put you into, a, into like a, uh, you know, a knitted jacket like this. It's really ugly. But this dashingly good-looking young guy who had hair at one point, um, when he was eight years old, read a book by Albert Allen Bartlett. And he read about exponential trends. So he went to his parents and said, you know, the allowance you give me every week, all I'm asking for is I just want one penny a week. One penny a week. But I want you to double it every week. And my parents were like, oh, this is super cheap, right? This is great. We don't need to give this kid a lot of money. Because what they were doing is they were thinking linearly, right? And lo and behold, if you do this, if you do this for one month, this is four weeks, right? And we're doubling. We go from one, I get one penny in the first week, two pennies in the second week, four pennies, and then eight pennies. At the end of the first month, my parents gave me 16 cent. It's nothing, right? Then we took this further and we said, okay, so how does this look like after three months? Well, after three months, my parents paid me $40. Still tiny amounts of money, right? But now it gets interesting because now we're coming into what is called the end of the first half. So after half a year, my parents needed to sell their house because they had to pay me $761,000. But here it gets interesting. In exponential trends, there's something we call the second half. In this case, when the summer was over, the pain for my parents began. Now make a choice. I just want to have you do a guess. At the end of one year, how much money did my parents need to pay me? Again, we started out with one penny, and we did this for 52 weeks. This is not a long time. 52 weeks, just one year. How much money did my parents have to pay me? One million dollars? A thousand billion? They had to pay me 45 trillion US dollars. 45 trillion US dollars is the combined GDP of these seven nations, the seven largest industrial nations on the planet. That's what exponential trends do to you. And more importantly, you need to understand that exponential trends have this thing which is called the second half, where the numbers get just staggeringly big. And in a lot of technologies, we're starting to get into the second half. This is important to understand that the world will look so dramatically different tomorrow than it does look today. Here's the challenge. Exponential, technology moves on an exponential like, way. Our thinking is linearly. So in this, in this chart, there's three interesting parts. Part number one is this here, what we call disappointment. Because you want technology to be better in the beginning, but it's really not that great. Right? Remember, the first month, I only made 16 cents. You can't buy anything for 16 cents. If you have ever seen Google Glass, anyone has played with Google Glass? Okay, perfect. So if you've seen Google Glass, it's a perfect example. I was at Google when we released Google Glass. And I can tell you, Google Glass is too expensive. The battery life is terrible. It only has about two hours of battery life. The features are really mediocre. It doesn't do a lot and you look like an idiot. So the problem is you're disappointed. Now the challenge with technology is when you're disappointed, a lot of people dismiss it. They don't see it. And then you get to this iPhone moment. This is 10 years ago. Steve Jobs gets on stage and shows you the iPhone for the first time. He does this like, here's one more thing. And this moment is the moment when you realize a phone isn't a phone anymore. A phone is a mini computer. And a phone doesn't have buttons anymore. A phone has glass. And everything changes. And within three years, you get into chaos and amazement, where you can't keep up with the change we're seeing in the world anymore. This is what Nokia experienced. Three years after the iPhone, Nokia was the number one phone in the world. Nokia was gone. The challenge is if we're staying on this line, if we're staying on this thing, this is your path to doom. This is where we fail. The challenge is what we are doing today is we're looking for better ideas. Whereas in reality, what we should do is we should look for more ideas. And I want to teach you a methodology, a way of thinking, a way of running your company, how you get to more ideas, which will lead to better outcomes. And calling this collaborative innovation. 
It starts with competitions, go to, goes over crowdsourcing, crowdfunding, open platforms, and ultimately open source. We'll talk about each of those.